everybody, it's Tyler here at Kettering Kickoff, day number two, Jackie and T number 6080 on. Well, this is digital dislocators, but we got the robot Tadpole here. It's their uh, mini bot that I love it. This is so cute that they go through. You should see this thing zipping through the field. By the way, great season by 681. Congratulations to District Wins for it. And we'll be talking a bit more about why they created this robot, how it could potentially benefit your team as well, too. And I can't wait to just dive a bit more into this cute little thing coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Fun is continuing to grow and looking for new ad partners for the 2024 season. If your organization has a positive message to spread to our over 250,000 unique viewers, go to firstupdatesnow.com slash contact to get more information. Uh, Joseph, let's talk about, uh, at first, uh, the goal of this robot. Why did digital dislocators even create this robot in the first place? And uh, what are you hoping to accomplish uh, with it as well? Yeah, so to start us off, I'll talk a little bit about Tadpole's origins. Uh, he started off as a mini project about week three. Uh, we decided, we saw inspiration from team uh, Howdy Bots. Uh, they built short stack and we really loved the design concept and thought it brought a lot to the table. So we decided to make our own concept of it for this year's Charged Up game. Uh, you know, really thinking about the design concept for us, we really wanted to get into CAD. This year was our first year ever incorporating CAD into our official on-season robot. Uh, this robot is the first fully catted out robot we have ever finished. Tons of decals, tons of paint, tons of hard work, welds, you know, a lot going into it. And that kind of goes into our electronics. That's what I'm going to talk about next. So in our electronics cage in here, we have what we call the toaster. It holds our Rio, uh, our radio, everything based around the battery is our main thing about it. The battery is the housing of all the electronics, housing of everything that comes with the robot, aside from the top hat and everything, etc. Uh, I think I'm about ready to hand it off to Curtis to talk about the drive chassis and a little bit more of the mechanical, me mechanical aspect of this robot. Something I want to ask you, did you have any challenges while trying to package the electronics into the small frame? Yeah, so this is my first real uh, electronics experience. Uh, we spent hundreds of hours of CAD designing the electronics cage for our on-season robot. This one was a lot of fun, a lot of experimentation with flipping designs, trying to find the best way to do it. We definitely have ideas to make it even smaller. That's our goal for this, make the smallest, cutest little bot. And it was a lot of fun designing this thing. So much 3D printing aspect that we thought about doing it. It, it just blows me away. So. And hey, Curtis, I got to ask you about the drive base on this. It looks like such a small frame. So uh, what was the size of this? And uh, did you have any challenges trying to get everything into that small of a size? Oh, it's always a challenge with the uh, trying to get the smallest robot possible. Uh, but the frame is currently 13 by 13, if you want to flip it over. Oh, keep it going. So we got two Neos driving four Colsons via chain drive. Uh, I think they're on four to ones right now. We had them on three to ones, but that was just a little too fast and not enough torque for us. But it's a compact little thing. We had a really hard time fitting all the uh, electronics in there, especially the uh, Spark Maxes. We had to really struggle to fit them in. So they're actually sitting on the uh, support frames for the uh, wheels. They're just zip tied up in there. And there's a big polycarb panel to just you know hold everything in place. And I'm, I'm really proud of that little package. We got a lot into a little. And that basically bolts directly onto our uh, big riveted box frame here. That just holds everything together. Uh, riveted so we can just switch out the rivets if we need to, drill them out, put new ones in if it gets hit because this robot's light, it gets beat up a lot, it weighs about 60 pounds. Um, so we really go for modularity here. We want it to really just come apart and go back together with the all brand new parts. Did you have any challenges with the drivetrain of having you know such a small base that you have to worry about scrubbing, especially pulsing wheels on it too? Originally, uh, yes, we had a lot of problems with the chain, getting the chain tension right. We had a lot of problems with bearings blowing up, so we had to put extra support on the outside of the wheels to keep them like contained almost. And we got to talk about this uh, uh, intake uh, 
uh, scoring mechanism you have here. I watched it on the field. Uh, I like that you have the capability of uh, both uh, depositing, but also shooting as well, too, as well, too. Talk to me more about it. Yes, so uh, it is a, as actuated, Joe, if you want to do that, on a Neo running 125-1 degree ratio that is chain driven to a piece of steel hex uh, and that everything just pivots off that. We got two polycarb arms. We also have a uh, Neo one-to-one -one chain driving our bottom roller here. That bottom roller is PVC and 3D printed and it is covered in the FTC floor tiling wrapped in duct tape. So that gives a really good grip on the cubes and then it belt drives up to three green wheels which give really good grip and kind of squish in for the cube for maximum compression so we can really throw those cubes up into the high. That's about it for mechanical. Yeah, Adelaide, I really got to ask you uh, in regards to the iterations. Now, as we talked earlier, that you went through so many different changes on this robot, and I know this robot's already competed at a couple of events as well. So, talk to me about uh, the changes and also the performance at a couple of past uh, off seasons too. So, Tadpole has actually competed in three events, which is Big Bang, Rainbow Rumble, and here at Kettering Two. And between Big Bang and Rainbow Rumble, we added 35 pounds in stage weights, and then we had to reinforce this top bracket here. And then that was about it for Big Bang to Rainbow Rumble. And then to Rainbow Rumble to here, we actually switched out the roller that was here for these green squishy compliant wheels. And then we reinforced this top bracket even more and did some testing with a 90 degree uh, gearbox. Tadpole's whole, from the beginning, Tadpole's whole like purpose was to provide outstanding learning experiences, which is actually in the acronym of his name, which is here. Tadpole. This is the pole aspect of it, and that's about it. I know when we talked earlier too that uh, you have made some resources available. I think both your uh, on-shape CAD is available and a couple other things. Where can uh, teams go to find that? Should they want to learn more? So available online, we have on-shape files that are open to the public. We have a Chief Delphi thread uh, labeled Project Tadpole, which you can find obviously on Chief Delphi. Um, we have a full CAD posted and a lot of iterations and talk a little bit more in depth about each part of these systems and you get to see more of a, a daily basis of how we thought of these design changes and how they ended up incorporating into the current Tadpole. Well, 681, thank you so much for uh, taking time to show us more about this. Tadpole is amazing and we can't wait to see, uh, of course, how it does here at Kettering Kickoff and teams go find out more about this uh, uh, robot as well too. Uh, best of luck here and thanks a lot and good luck during the crescendo season as we get ready. Thank you so much. This video on fun was brought to you by viewers like you and also by the following. Discover how you can graduate debt-free at Kettering University with Kettering's amazing co-op employment programs. Those accepted into Kettering University can apply for a robotic scholarship providing up to an additional $5,000 a year in tuition assistance. Head on over to kettering.edu slash first to learn more, schedule a visit, or apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.